Right, so people always ask me, Ali, how do you have so much energy? How do you get so much done? How do you never seem to get tired of it all? And guys, in this video, I'm gonna be revealing the secrets behind this, and those are six tips on how I'm never tired, and they're all around how I sleep more productively. Let's get into it. Tip number one is to use a Kindle on the bedside table. So back in the day when my sleep used to be absolutely terrible and I used to be tired all the time, I used to take my phone into bed with me. So while I was in bed, I'd be having the bright light in my face. I'd be scrolling through Instagram and Twitter and Tinder very occasionally. This is absolutely terrible. And this is probably the most game changing thing that I did for my sleep. I now have the phone across the room from me on my, on my like, chest of drawers, wirelessly charging. And the only thing on my bedside table is my Kindle. And I've got the Kindle Oasis, which has like a warm kind of light in it. Not sure if that makes any difference at all, but I read before bed and I read for about 20 minutes to half an hour. And then I kind of feel my eyes closing and then I fall asleep very, very quickly. And since I started doing this, since I stopped having this blue light shining in my face from my phone, I haven't like, I rarely feel tired in the morning. So this is a huge, huge, huge tip that I think will really help you guys. Tip number two is to get a physical alarm clock. This is again, a game changer. I set the alarm on my physical alarm clock. I actively decide what time I'm gonna wake up. And then when the alarm wakes up in the morning, it like forces me to get out of bed to turn it off because it's just a, such an unpleasant sound. Whereas I found that with my phone, when I used to have the alarm on my phone, even if the phone was across the room from me, it was way too easy for me to just be like, hey Siri, alarm off, or hey Siri, shut up. No. And when you have a physical alarm clock, anyway, like I found that it makes me more mindful about my sleeping because now I can like tactilely and physically set what time I want to wake up. I can see on the clock face how many hours of sleep I'm getting. And this has contributed to my sleeping productively slash not being tired. Tip number three is no caffeine after 2 p.m. Again, I picked up this tip from Matthew Walker's book, Why We Sleep. I uh, talked about ca caffeine. I also did a load of research into caffeine for a video about is coffee good for you? Basically, caffeine stays in the bloodstream for absolutely ages and However, we might think that we are immune to the effects of caffeine or whatever, we're not. Like, it does operate on our neurotransmitters in the brain in various different ways, and it basically stops us from sleeping. Or if we do fall asleep, it stops us from sleeping well. And so I have a lot of coffee before like 2 or 3 p.m. and a lot of tea as well. But then after 2 or 3 p.m., I decide I'm only going to have decaffeinated stuff. So I've got a box of decaf tea, and occasionally we also get decaf Diet Coke from the shops to have with takeaway in the evening, just so I minimize my caffeine intake in the afternoon. Tip number four is to use blackout curtains. Now these ones that I've got in my room are not particularly blackout, but they do block out most of the light. And I found that like, this is again, one of the most bang for buck changes that you can do to massively increase the quality of your sleep. And looking at the evidence, there's a load of evidence that says the darker your room is, the better your sleep is gonna be overall. And this is why I find like, when I'm in a hotel that has really, really good blackout curtains, I sleep incredibly well. And it's been on my to-do list for such a long time to get proper blackout curtains in my room. I just haven't gotten around to it because I'm a bit of an idiot, but I'm gonna do that straight after recording this video. Tip number five, again, is from research cited in Matthew Walker's book, While We Sleep, and which is that the optimum temperature for most of us to sleep in is around 19 degrees Celsius. This is quite cold. It's quite, it's a lot colder than like room temperature, which tends to be around 23 to 25 degrees. When we're sleeping, part of what's happening is that our core body temperature is falling. And so if we're in a room that's kind of cool and we're snuggled up nicely in the blanket, I find that that massively increases the quality of my own sleep. And so practically the things I do to get to that point are I have this fancy ass Dyson fan on the bedroom, which circulates wind air around the room. And I also have my windows wide open, uh, which helps, especially in the winter. And it's just like really creates a very cold atmosphere in my room, which makes my sleeping a lot easier and a lot better. And then I'm not just like struggling because it's too hot and too humid. Tip number six is an amazing strategy that I discovered on the internet for how to fall asleep in under two minutes. And the idea is as follows. Uh, apparently this is a tactic that pilots use to fall asleep anywhere because airplane pilots, airline pilots need to be able to sleep at will wherever they want so that they can, because their schedules are all a bit weird. Um, but I've started using this trick when I do want to get to bed and it works like 90% of the time. It doesn't work 10% of the time, but that's fine. And the trick is you lie in bed and then you start off by like closing your eyes and really trying your best to relax every single muscle in your face as possible. And that often means that the mouth will kind of plop open like this and the eyes will be very closed. And it's all about relaxing all of the facial muscles. And then once the face is fully relaxed, at that point, we're then gonna relax the legs. And so I imagine my legs kind of sinking into the bed and like fully, fully, fully relaxing and feeling like kind of lead weights. And at that point, if I haven't fallen asleep by then, which usually have, I usually like 50% of the time, I just fall asleep by then and I don't know what happens next. Uh, at that point, I kind of adjust the position of my arms slightly, and I try and relax my arms like very deep down into the bed, relax the fingers, relax the elbows, relax the shoulders. And then if I still haven't fallen asleep, and again, you know, then 
I, this is in 70% of cases, I will have fallen asleep within a minute as I'm just doing this thing. Then for the final kind of one minute, once everything is relaxed, I'm then doing a thing where I just focus on breathing in and out. And I'm trying to do that meditation -y type thing, being mindful and only focusing on the breath. And if I have a thought, then I just let the thought go and I just focus on the breath. And I find that this sounds, it sounds really weird to explain. And when I first read this, I think I read it on like lifehacker.com or something like that. I was like, oh, there's no way this is gonna work. And then I tried it. And now anytime I need to fall asleep, I actually just do this thing. And 90% of the time it works. If it doesn't work after like a minute or two of trying to do this meditative thing, I'm like, all right, cool, that's fine. And then I read for a bit more and then I try the thing again. And it ba I've basically got a 100% success rate. So before I discovered this technique, I used to think, I used to kind of lie in bed for ages thinking, okay, I need to get to sleep. Um, but now that I do this thing, it happens like really, really quickly. So 100% recommend giving it a shot. Now, all this stuff around sleep is really important because obviously sleep is one of the vital functions for a human body. Uh, it helps us make our body healthier, but it also helps to make the mind healthier because learning is the thing that happens when we sleep, like our brain is consolidating all the neural connections between information. And if you're interested in using your sleep to improve your learning, you might also be interested in using something else to improve your learning, such as Brilliant, who are very kindly sponsoring this video. Now, if you haven't heard by now, Brilliant is a fantastic platform with online courses in maths, science, and computer science. It's really good because they teach you everything from first principles, and they teach you in a way that's much more interesting than the way we get taught in school. It's not didactic, it's not like just memorizing a bunch of facts, it's solving problems and building things from the ground up. My personal favorites are the courses on computer science. They've got a fantastic introduction to algorithms. They've got a great course on learning Python. And they've recently added a new one all about cryptocurrencies and how cryptography works. And currently my crypto portfolio is doing very well. I think it's up 25%. Probably not gonna attribute that to understanding crypto, but like understanding the fundamentals and the maths and science behind cryptocurrencies has made me much more confident with putting more and more of my money investing in crypto. If like me, you're interested in lifelong learning and improving your mental faculties and all that fun stuff, then head over to brilliant.org forward slash Ali and the first 200 people to use that link will get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So thanks Brilliant for sponsoring this video. And if you wanna see how my sleep fits into my morning routine the following morning, then, then check out this video over here, which is my insanely productive morning routine. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Do you wanna try some of this? We should feed this to Sheen. I, I ended up having, I ended up piling like 18, 18 plus spoons of coffee. You know, let's like stir it first. This is good. Oh, ew. I'm gonna try and, I'm gonna try and drink some. Oh, God. <laughs> it's so bad. Oh my days. Mate, try some. You've gotta try some. This is what happens when you try and freaking get a solid hook for a video and you put like 20 spoons of coffee. Oh. Uh, would, you, would, you, uh, would, you raise, would you raise my salary if I drank it all? I'd raise your salary by 0.01% if I drank it all. I need to wait for the spoon. <sighs> I'm really tempted. <laughs> yeah, do it. Okay. Oh, come on. I, 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 I could do, I could do it. Do it. I need water, but do I could it. do it. I'll raise the salary anyway, let zero point zero off, does it? <laughs> Bloody hell, what's wrong with you? I'm not going to sleep tonight. You're going to get a, a, a cardiac arrhythmia and you're going to die. <sighs> Thanks. There's stuff floating in it as well. Maybe I shouldn't do it. Yeah. It's not that bad though.